Photos of California Governor Gavin Newsom at a birthday outing with other California medical officials is stirring up the internet and some discussion. Indeed. Here to discuss our Democratic strategists and council member at large for Montgomery County, Maryland, Will Juwando, and also senior policy analyst at the Independent Women's Forum, Inez Stepman. Great to see you guys. Good to see you guys. Morning. Good to be here. So, Will, let me start with you as an elected public official. I mean, <laughs> what was your response to this? Because, look, it's one thing private people making their own choices, trying to live their lives the best way that they can, following the guidance that they've been given. But if you're a public official, you got to set the example. And not only is he at this party in indoors with people very close to each other, as we've seen from some of the photos that come out, but the top medical officials in the state <laughs> are there. What are they thinking? Yeah. Yeah, n not a great look. I mean, look, I've as as we were talking about, I've got six people in my in my immediate household, so you know I can't add too many, and, and I'm breaking our rules, and so I I'm very conscious of that. Uh, you have to set an example. I mean, we we you can't criticize uh, President Trump for not wearing a mask and doing all the craziness that he's done. Not saying that these are the same thing, but it, it certainly isn't a good look to be in a what they call the garage, but I, I, I wish my garage was that yeah, nice. Right. <laughs> you know, have, having an op opulent dinner, people are being laid off of their service worker jobs. Um, you know, I just celebrate this in a year. I mean, I, I, I didn't, I, it didn't, it was not a good look. I don't think it was uh, appropriate. And even if it was technically under the guidelines, it was just wrong. It was bad politically. It sends the wrong message to Californians. And I know why it's the Twitter, Twitter had, and the internet have taken over. It's just, it wasn't smart. Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, Inez, this is a, a restaurant called French Laundry. It costs $350 per person and in violation of health guidelines. I can't think of anything else that undermines public guidance. But this isn't the first time that we've seen this from a lot of these officials. And I think that a lot of the public is just completely fed up with this type of behavior. Absolutely, people are fed up and they're, they're right to be fed up. Frankly, this kind of hypocrisy, I think, does more to get people to, to flout coronavirus restrictions, even more reasonable coronavirus restrictions than all of the uh, quote unquote fake news that our tech overlords refuse to let us see or, or evaluate on our own, right? Seeing these kinds of incidents really makes people fed up. It makes them feel like there's a hypocritical double standard for them and and for, you know, sort of people in the ruling class or the elite or politicians. And to have the medical folks there, I mean, that that undermines uh, faith in the institution, in, in folks who do work in public health, who are going out there trying to tell us what to do. And I say all this, I, I take this very seriously. I follow a lot of the rules myself, you know, but it, it, this is this is incredibly frustrating. You still have people, you know, who had to go through um, you know, hospitalization or even they, they weren't able, haven't been able to have funerals for their loved ones. And then you see uh, Gavin Newsom at, at the French Laundry, which, by the way, I've never been to, even though I'm from that, that part of the country. I got married across the street from there. But uh, <laughs> I've never been to the French Laundry. Don't have $350 a plate to, uh, to go to the French Laundry. But, but this really rubs people the wrong way. Yeah. yeah. Really I mean, we remember here because we covered it, how mad people were just about Nancy Pelosi <laughs> showing off her ice cream laden freezer oh, man, because yeah. that was also like this incredibly out of touch moment. But at least she wasn't like surrounded by a bunch of other fancy people flouting public health guidelines. So this you have like the let them eat cake kind of look uh -huh. to it. And you have the flouting of the public health guidelines and by the top public health officials. It's absolutely mind blowing. Yeah. Well, you, you I'm really curious. I, I really... You know, I don't envy you right now being a local, local elected official. I know your constituents are really lucky to have you in there. How are you thinking about the trade-offs that have to be made right now and the appetite that people have for further restrictions when we've been in this thing so long and they are seeing things like the hypocrisy of, of Gavin Newsom and other officials? When you see weird things that, like in New York where they close the schools but they're keeping the bars and the restaurants open, doesn't make any sense. How are you weighing the need to restrict behavior for public health versus people's appetite to continue in these kind of measures, especially when Washington hasn't provided any additional stimulus? Yeah, it's a it's a really difficult situation. I, I'll say that. And I, I appreciate the question. You know, we are having a discussion like so many other jurisdictions around the country as numbers are surging, as some of the highest we had uh, over 2000 people. Uh, contract the virus in Maryland uh, for a couple of days, which is higher than some of the highest days we've ever had during the whole pandemic. And that's happening across the country. So I've actually called on the governor to to shut down uh, for four to six weeks 
while we can get hopefully some virus out to the most mm-hmm. vulnerable um, and we get through the holidays. I think you need regional and statewide approaches. It's hard as an elected official for me to go to my residents and say we have to shut down, but you can go to Northern Virginia or to Prince George's County or to DC uh, and the rules are different and so, or another part of Maryland. And so I, I hope that we can take regional and statewide approaches for a short period of time because the difference now is, and I've been trying to tell our residents, is there's light at the end of the tunnel. We know uh, two vaccines are, are looking good. There's probably more coming. If we can get through this holiday season, get through the winter, hunker down, that's what I've been trying to say. But it's devastating on the economy. I've also asked for our governor mm-hmm. to bring $250 million in additional assistance for small businesses. We have to do both of those things, and then hopefully we'll get this federal support. Uh, and we need that before uh, Joe Biden is inaugurated because the state and local governments are really struggling right now. Yeah, let me ask you about that, Inez, because this is this is the part where I just have to depart, where, like, look, Without federal stimulus, I do not think you can have another four to six week lockdown. I mean, and we, and I'm reasonably certain more stimulus is just not going to happen between what Nancy Pelosi said and what Mitch McConnell has said. The social consequences and the wiping out of your restaurant and small business stock, I think that would probably mean 50 to 100,000 more small businesses, which would mean one third, uh, sorry, 50 to 100,000 restaurants, which would mean one third of all restaurants before Corona would be closed um, by the time a vaccine would be able be able, able to be distributed and this is a terrible trade-off but this is the situation that washington has left us in so what i would say is is first of all this is why it's good to be generally fiscally responsible so that you you can have uh you know the ability to spend in a crisis not that we're, we're completely at the edge of, of financial collapse or anything like that but it, it does start to come um you know it's, it's difficult to make these big spends when you're already maxing out your credit card. So that's that's what I would say. Um, even though I'm not I'm not opposed, I'm actually with you on on the stimulus mm-hmm. at least on, on some aspects of it. I, I think if if uh, we're going to go into another shutdown, people need to be compensated if they're they're being forbidden to work from the government. But on the general uh, on the general question of the shutdown, I think probably the best thing to do is the halfway point between what's ideal for public health and what people will tolerate. Because I I I think too harsh a shutdown people will just start to rebel against it and in, in mass, right? Like yeah. it, people are going to fed up. They're going to look at this French laundry thing, right? They're going to look at, and they're, they're going to, to conclude that there, there are no measures worth taking, that this is, you know, not as dangerous as our public health officials say it is that, like, and, and, and these are, are reasonable conclusions, or at least um, even though I don't agree with them, they're reasonable conclusions when you consider the, the lack of trust in our institutions generally, that lack of trust is really showing it's really that trust is needed during a pandemic. We need to trust our health officials when they say this is only for four weeks or um, that this is really necessary. And that may be true or it might be not true, but people don't have the confidence in those institutions um, to be able to trust them in that way. And they don't have that confidence for good reason, because they see people going yeah. to the French laundry, you know, even earlier, they, they saw health officials endorsing, you know, um, mass protests in the street when we were still completely locked down, right? So like these kinds of things, it is reasonable for people to then question, um, you know, whether these things are necessary. So I, I feel the best route is probably to to double down on sort of um, less costly interventions, try to encourage people to social distance, cap large gatherings, right? Try to encourage hygiene, um, but not to completely shut down again, simply because I think that the people won't, won't tolerate it. They're fed I agree up. With you. Well, yeah. what's your response to that? And I also want to acknowledge, like, obviously very easy for Inez yeah. and myself and Sagar to opine. Yeah, We're look, not in a position I mean, where I actually have to, have to I don't weigh have to pull the trigger, but. lives <laughs> yeah. versus small businesses and all of that. So with, you know, with it acknowledged that this weighs a lot heavier in the decision making that you have to um, that you have to engage in. What is your response to Sagar's critique there that basically, listen, people are exhausted. They haven't been given um, the stimulus from the government to be able to survive. And so the government has sort of lost authority in this situation to really be able to institute lockdowns at this point. Well, you know, I un- first thing I say, and I say to every small business owner and resident, I get it. You know, like I've got four kids under the age of 10. My wife works from home. We've got support and it's still very difficult. My parents are small business owners and, and they're struggling through this. Uh, and they, you know, my dad, I'll be very transparent. My stepdad has been on unemployment insurance. So I, I get that this is a difficult time for everybody. Um, you know, but I, when I called on the governor to shut down for four to six weeks, I had that one of that that feeling in my stomach of like, ooh, that was a really difficult thing to say, but it was the right thing to say. I, I, I just think when you look at the numbers, 
you know, when you look at how many people have died, 250,000, we've had quite a few here in our jurisdiction, in our state. We And we have light at the tunnel. I think the difference now is that when we started this, no one knew how long it was going to have to be. And the worst thing, I, I we talked to our public health officer yesterday. They say sometimes these half measures are, 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 are even worse because you get the sense of security, but you're not actually seeing numbers go down. Because remember, mm-hmm. we've been in half measure for most of the country in our jurisdiction, and we still had the rise. And so I think that's, that's why I would say it's better to do a shutdown, mask mandates, you know, go more extreme for a shorter period of time with the hope uh, and the support and the money. We've given out $40 million locally. Our state has given out money. We need more federal and state and local support. Um, but that's the approach I'm trying to take. I'm not saying it's an easy pill to swallow, but yeah. I think at the end of the day, when you look at these numbers, these case rates, uh, we could have a really, really horrible four to six, eight weeks if we don't take these measures. Well, I can't imagine. I mean, I don't envy your position, as I said. And I also, I can't imagine if you lost mom, dad, sister, brother, when we're so close to having a vaccine and being out of this thing. Um, Guys, thanks for your perspective on this. We're going to be right back with more with Team Rising.